Hey guys, per usual, everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. So it's been a wet and wild week here. Let's take a look at some charts. Obviously, BTC still crushing it, crushing the game. No survivors. Nobody can keep up. The only thing I'll note is that uh, XMR and BTC generally are correlated pretty well if you look at uh, historical correlations. So it kind of makes sense that XMR moving up with BTC here. Um, everything else is just kind of dawdling. Um, I have noticed that TRX and BNB are mostly inversely correlated with BTC. So interesting that BNB is moving up a little bit here. Um, yeah, other than that, you know, dominance, I don't look at it ever. I don't care about the metric. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but people are looking at it, so I'm going to look at it. And uh, we're highest Bitcoin dominance since December 2017 at this point, building some sort of rising wedge. Does that matter? Probably not. Um, interesting here, we actually had a bull div on this W double bottom. <laughs> You know, if I'm a chartist, I'm looking at the RSI on anything, and uh, that's what it was telling me. Not that it really mattered to me then, but um, I'm just trying to see, like, are the signals on this chart even even meaningful uh, backtesting-wise? So if this is any indication, it says alt season soon, but uh, I don't feel it in my heart of hearts, you know what I mean? Alts really look terrible in general on the alt BTC pairs. They just keep making bull divs, like multi-week bull divs that just get crushed over and over again. I'll talk that talk about that a little later on with EPTC. Um, one of the biggest things that happened this week was USDCNY broke seven. Why does that matter? Who cares? So what this chart is saying, white is the USDCNY exchange rate, typically fixed by the People's Bank of China. So they all adjust it. Whatever they want to do, they'll print money, they'll take money out of the circulation, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Point being, the only reason I know about this is because in 2014 through 2017, everybody and their mother was talking about how the yuan was weakening and crypto was was booming from there. The general idea is that if your currency is weakening, you're going to look for other outlets to hold value, for store value. So that's called capital flight. China also keeps a tight clamp down on that stuff and seven breaking seven was a historic level dating back to you know 2008 so it flirted with it a few times in 2016 uh early on i think january 2019 it, and they you know kept it under wraps so there's this there's the hong kong stuff going on likely related but what does it mean for crypto in general if yuan is weakening it's bullish for crypto at least it has been historically I doubt this will keep moving up, but if it does, it's certainly more and more bullish uh, for BTC. And you couldn't write a better script on a week weekend open. So Forex opens like Sunday at uh, whatever it is, 6.30 or 5.30 or whatever. Um, just as that was happening, we were completing this beautiful textbook, Adam and Eve. And... You know, everybody's sitting, all the currency traders are sitting down or reading the papers or whatever, whatever the crap that they do. Uh, and the one broke its back of uh, seven and boom, off to the races. We go to, you know, 12, 1300 and BTC land, uh, 1220, sorry. So is this actual capital flight out of China? Who? It's hard to say, likely not, but people think it might be. So the narrative is strongly there, especially because it was there. Previously, the other thing we had earlier this week was uh, the first rate decrease in the U.S. since 2008. So that is also helping lots of macro headwinds, helping crypto here. And let's take a look at the usual suspects. So Tether, again, if Tether's below a dollar, it's usually bearish. If it's above a dollar, it's bullish. It's at a dollar right now, whatever. Um, if Coinbase leads Bitfinex lately, it's been bullish, and right now it's sort of you know flatlined. If Bitfinex is ahead of Coinbase, generally, they, generally that's bearish. Not something I like base my trading decisions on, but something I look at in the aggregate. You know, if this is wildly one side or the other, that kind of speaks to the general sentiment of the ecosystem. Here's CME futures contracts. Talk about it every video. Um, the rollover was the local bottom. Kind of not surprised by that. People kind of sell into 
the uh, Expri as their rope jostling positions around, either on spot or on uh, the Futures stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. The next one's August 30th. If we're consolidating towards something, which we might be towards that time period, that's certainly a time to pay attention scenario. But there's really nothing, you know, out of whack craziness that's going on here. But the one thing I will say is every time we've made a higher high after a rollover, it's always led to strong bullish momentum, aside from this point. <laughs> uh, but anytime we make higher highs, you know, we make a higher high, make a higher high, uh, make a higher high. I mean, it just goes, goes, goes. And this is kind of what I was alluding to. If we're sort of consolidating, triangling into August 30th, um, again, that's sort of like a, a kill zone for everybody because everybody's watching the chart, the rollover happens, high attention of traders in general with a uh, big size are watching the chart. So more often than not, something will happen. Um, what I'm really seeing, what all these charts boil down to, to me, is that if we break 13, it's off to the races again. Probably a quick retest of all-time highs, honestly. Um, the way this macro stuff's going. We're like a few currency devaluations away from just <laughs> a $2,000 vertical candle at this point. Uh, volume still kind of hasn't come back, at least not on Bitfinex. Still waiting for that massive green volume candle. Um, but yeah, this could just triangle out until August 30th, basically, and then make a decision on the rollover. Or uh, either make the decision a few days before the rollover or after the rollover. So that would be September, beginning of September-ish. All right, we were looking at this Adam and Eve. This was July 30th. So, you know, anybody can look at any pattern as early as they want and say, you know, with some degree of confidence, I think this is going to happen, whatever. Who cares? It's all about putting the money on the line. So the first thing you'll see, sometimes I'll call this an Adam left. That alludes to the fact that there's a building Adam and Eve. And that's what I was showing here, building Adam and Eve. Again, this is a back padding. This is just saying, like, this is what happened. Okay. <laughs> we had an Adam and Eve and it broke out. Not only the pattern broke out, broke out of the four hour cloud. You'll often see Kumo breakouts coupled with patterns, either invert head and shoulders, head and shoulders, Adam and Eve, invert Adam and Eve, whatever. Uh, you'll see that over and over and over again. So the more you know about both, the better, because one will kind of force you to look for the other and sort of help you. So this is right before uh, we kind of broke out of the four hour cloud. And then this is the result, obviously. Uh, we hit the 1618 almost exactly. And never be afraid to make zones of resistance or support more than just a line. You know, it was clear that there were wicks here, that this was the zone to break, and that's what it took to break it before we saw a lot more momentum. So again, what am I seeing here? 13, big level. If we make a higher high, pretty good chance we hit 13 and then decide from there. Yearly pivots at 13. Overall, the low time frames here are just a jumbled mess. Uh, weekly cloud is not 100% bullish yet, so the confluence really isn't there for just like massive continuation here. If we look at the one other time this sort of was comparable, it was in 2016, 2017, when we waited for the twist to make a higher high from the cloud breakout. So I'm not really expecting a break of 13 here, just based on what happened previously. It's better if we go slower. It's better if we build up to it and make this a uh, higher high as we're twisting on the cloud. It's just a better trade. It's an easier trade. We don't pull back as hard when we do pull back. Like we go to 20K and then we pull back to 11 and then it's just, it's a mess. Um, you know, I'll trade whatever happens obviously, but clearly better if we just chill for a little bit because we haven't chilled <laughs> since April, basically. Uh, no chill at all. On the daily chart, I'm seeing a uh, weak case for a bullish TK recross above the cloud. So when we see this, it doesn't happen often, especially on the daily. It happened three times in 2017. So when you see these crosses, uh, here's another one just that I'm looking at, um, bearish cross below the cloud. In general, they're followed by extreme momentum, trend following momentum, or trend uh, continuation here. So again, I'm looking at 13, I'm looking at um, this uh, August 15th was basically the previous times it happened, seven, 2017, so it happened three times in 2017. Each time it took about 40 to 50 days 
to make to finally make a new high. So just like on the weekly, once it makes a new high, we're good to go for severe trend continuation. So I'm just saying like I'm expecting on August 15th, again, if I'm looking at CME contracts, so like August 15th, August 30th, probably going to have a decision by then. The problem is if you sort of buy 10.8, which is what you should do based on cloud trading, you know, you're buying cloud support, you're buying the key June. The issue is this could just trickle down to 8.8 again. When cloud is flat, it's sort of ranging and trendless and less accurate. So it's safer to buy the higher highs than it is just to like buy the medium middle of the range, basically, is, is what I'm seeing here. Uh, but in general, long term, over the next month or so, it certainly looks good for up, especially if we can get that weekly uh, bullish twist. This is uh, alligator and fractals. Not going to explain it other than these are EMAs or these are MAs. And then uh, basically, if you make a higher high or a lower low, you get a hat. You get a bear hat or a bull hat. If you break a bull hat when everything is bullish, that says to buy. So you're looking for confluence here, signals aligning. If you break in a bear hat when everything's bearish, it says to sell. Now, this isn't like 100% amazing all the time always, but when it does work out like the cloud, it, it's really good. We had this uh, twist bull here following a bullish break and boom. So what would I be looking for here would be, uh, we'll likely get a bearish, or sorry, excuse me, a bullish fractal print here. And uh, basically it's saying, you know, if we make a higher high, you add to your position or you open a position. And that can work on all these fractals back. So we make a second higher high, you add. We make a third higher high, you add. And, uh, you know, it'll keep making fractals and so on and so on. That's all I have to say for BTC. You know, if we make higher highs, we keep going up. <laughs> if we don't, we uh, range for a little bit. 17 minutes to say that. Um, let's talk about ETH. ETH has some issues, mainly volume on the exchange, you know. So this is month to month ETH ICO treasury uh, withdrawals, and they're still holding 2 million, above 2 million in total. But the big thing here is, you know, these cells are, would be meaningless if buy volume on exchanges was way, way up, which it is not. It is basically down significantly uh, since April. So it's, it's just even November, like it just hasn't come back. Nobody's buying ETH right now. I don't know why, just, that's just the way it is. Uh, if we look at uh, low time frames first, this is four hour. Uh, just like BTC, it had this Adam and Eve and then it just didn't go anywhere, you know? So that's the zone to watch again, 235, 236. If it breaks that, it should be good to go to 260. Um, I'm watching uh, previous highs. I'm watching previous order block. I'm watching potential ascending triangle thing, even though this looks like a bear flag. And uh, you know, it could break down trend-wise on the daily cloud. It doesn't look great. I'll show you in a second. Um, this is the most bullish thing I can think of for ETH. If we get a bullish TK cross, leading into October, we'll be set up for an uh, bullish edge to edge. And this sounds crazy. You know, it's going from 300 to 700. It always sounds crazy until it happens, obviously. And just to compare to how that would look with BTC, you know, I was talking, I was lucky enough to learn about the cloud pre-September 2015, yeah, and sort of look out for this edge to edge situation here. So it might take a year for Ethereum to break to 700, but if it breaks above 300, it should be good to go to seven. Something to watch through Q4. I don't think we'll see it Q3. This does kind of line up with two things fundamentally for ETH, which is uh, a hard fork towards the end of October. If it happens, they like to delay their stuff. And another um, ETH 2.0 thing coming mid-January or end of January, or maybe it's delayed, you know, it, who knows, but the hype train will be there. The meth heads will be out in full force. <laughs> um, another thing to watch for is this 350 to 420 zone, uh, just kind of previous support resistance area, key levels. So breaking into the uh, bear, bullish TK cross is the first thing I'm watching. Second is this break into the cloud. The third would be the 350 to 420 level. And then after that, it's we're good to go. If we look at the daily cloud, like I was saying, um, it doesn't look good for ETH. 
you know, it's clearly way different than the Bitcoin picture. It's below the cloud. The cloud is bearish. The 5200s trying to actually flip bearish again. So if we get a death cross on this, whew, man, it'll be uh, interesting to see what exactly happens when uh, all the trend metrics basically say it should be going down further. Um, the only like semblance of bullishness I see here is on the four hour waiting for this to sort of peek out of the cloud. And this lines up with the Adam and Eve 235 setting triangle thing. So it's got a, a decent shot, a decent window coming up in the next few days to actually make a move here once uh, BTC continues to consolidate. Ideally, this can uh, pull up and the ETHPTC pair can recover. It's basically like this is it. Like <laughs> this is Polo, so the volumes are a little wonky, but uh, after this, I don't see any support <laughs> until 0.01 uh, and things get real interesting for ETH BTC if that happens. Um, you know, but if these ICOs keep selling and there's no buying volume, it's it's just going to keep going down. And if I'm an ICO, I'm certainly selling if I see ETH price going down. So it's kind of like a uh, a long squeeze on a long squeeze, you know. People keep panicking and it's just it's a compounding effect. Uh, last thing I'll say is uh, ETH BTC, again, these bull divs just haven't really panned out. This is Polo on the hourly, so it's going to be all over the place. But yeah, I mean, there's another bull div here. We'll see what happens. Not really something I'm going long on specifically, but if I'm looking for hopium, this is it. All right, that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter, and happy trading.